By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are going to look at a final, a final of the Urborg Forest Frenzy, an old school Magic the Gathering tournament played in Dusseldorf, Germany. And in this finals we see two Dutch players, Evert, who's playing with a deck that I've called Savannah Bolt, and he's taking on Nick's version of the deck. So these are two top decks going head to head in these finals. Now before I jump into the deck deck I would just like to mention that as always you can skip this section and you can go straight to the games if you want to. So how can you do that? It's quite simple. Check the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games. Click on there and it will take you straight to the games. Now the nice thing is um, you can also find timestamps that take you to specific deck decks. So if you're for example, curious about Averts deck, you can find that link to that deck deck section and that part in the video. So you can kind of skip from track to track, just like a CD. Oh, I'm so old fashioned. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to uh, mention that as an option. Also, if you'd like to know more about uh, the rule set, uh, I, I believe this is Swedish old school. Again, check the description below to find all the ins and outs of this tournament. Okay, enough said about that. Now let's go to the deck decks. I'm gonna start with the deck of um, Avert. Let's take a look at his deck, Zavanna Bolt. And here we see the deck of the first finalist, Avert, and I've called it Zavanna Bolt because of the playset of Savannah Lines and the playset of Lightning Bolts. And it's also nice to know that Avert is the defending champion. So if he wins this, then he's won the tournament twice in a row, and that would be pretty impressive. And when we look at this deck, one of the things that I notice is that, you know, I see a lot of usual suspects, let's be honest. I see the blue power, I see a lot of the restricted cards you expect in a deck like this. Of course, uh, he is also playing with the two cards of black. If you splash black, you're always going to put these two cards in, Mind Twist and Mnemonic Tutor. Um, but what I find interesting when I'm looking at this build, and this says something about uh, Avert as a Magic player, I think, is that he's playing with quite a lot of creatures, actually, for this type of deck. You know, he's playing with a full playset of lines, a full playset of Suchis, uh, for Mistress Factories, which is which is pretty common, but still, you know, I see them as creatures as well. And he's playing with two Sarah Angels and a single Atox. So he actually has a lot of pressure that he can put on the board to kind of force his opponent to make decisions. Now his opponent's playing with the deck, so he's probably not going to really struggle with coming up with answers because that's basically what the deck does. Um, but it kind of shows that it's more than just a deck where he wants to respond on the opponent. He also wants to be the one that comes up with the problems, much more as his opponent in this finals, Nick. So when we're looking at the rest of the deck, another thing that I notice is he's playing with a lot of two-offs, three-offs, one-offs. He's not playing with a lot of play sets. Uh, for example, he's got that one copy artifact. He's got that one ATOC. He's playing with two swords to plow seers instead of four. I think the decision maybe that he's made there is that he said, I'm going with two swords and I'm going with a Disintegrate and a Psyblast. You know, obviously those two cards you can also uh, use to attack your uh, the, uh, your opponent's life total instead of just using it as creature removal. So it's more versatile. And also the counter magic is quite interesting. He's going with two counter spells and a Mana Drain instead of four counter spells and a Mana Drain, right? A lot of people would go for a full play set of counter spells and a Mana Drain uh, just having five counter, counter spells in your deck. He's not doing that. Like he's making different choices. I think... The fact that he's added white to the mix does make it easier because, you know, with a disenchant, with the swords, if you can't counter anything, you can at least get rid of it that way. Um, talking about one-offs, he's also playing with one Icy Manipulator. And basically what this does is it makes it harder for your opponent to kind of play against your deck because your deck becomes more flexible because you've got so many flavors in your deck. It's just like adding a new color. Whenever you add a new color, you add a, an, another possibility. And it's the same when you decide not to go full on with play sets, but instead say one of that, two of that, one of that, three of that, you know, when you kind of mix it up. Of course, the downside is that your deck becomes less consistent. That's of course the price you have to pay, but less consistent also means that it's harder for your opponent to sideboard against, for example. So it's quite interesting, you know, when you're looking at this list and you start thinking about that and thinking about when you're building your deck. Um, another interesting choice here, for example, is he's chosen to put Control Magic in the sideboard instead of in the main board. I think a lot of players would have put that in the main board. Same thing can be said for, um, for the Armageddon, which I think an Armageddon main 
would have worked in this deck as well. So quite interesting to see this small, little subtle choices that Averett has made. And I guess they're good choices because he's made it all the way to the finals again. So like I said, he's a defending champion. This is the deck of Avert. Now let's take a look at the deck of his opponent, Nick. And here we see the deck of the other finalist, Nick, and he's playing with the deck. And what I find interesting whenever I see somebody play with this is um, what choices have they made? Because yes, the core of the deck is ultimate control, right? You lean back and you wait for your opponent to do something and then you answer. Having access to counter magic, to blue power, to swords to plows here, to disenchants, right? So you can kind of wait for your opponent to do something and then you respond with it. And eventually you want to get ahead of the game via, via uh, a card advantage, right? And, and control the game and then possibly kill your opponent with basically animating your mistress factories and go in this deck or maybe play a huge disintegrate. But what I find interesting is looking at those differences that each and every player makes. For example, Nick here has chosen to play with no creatures at all and he's also playing an Abyss main. Remember those Suchis of Avert? Maybe they'll come in handy against this deck. Then again, he is playing with three disenchants and a Divine Offering and four swords. So he doesn't really, Nick doesn't really have to worry that much about uh, uh, the Suchis. One of the things I notice here in the deck of, of Nick is just he's going for full like control. He's not going with you know, I want to at least have some big creatures to put some pressure on or maybe a Savannah line or whatever. No, he's going for full control. He's not even playing any creatures other than, of course, the Mishra's factories that you can animate to become 2-2 creatures. And he's going full on on the GM Day Tome. So he's going with four tomes and also he's playing an Ivory Tower main. So those are all quite interesting. It's very control heavy. And, um, you know, I've, we've seen Nick's deck in action uh, before at this tournament and we saw what it can do really well. It's really good at controlling the game, getting card advantage, which is basically what the deck wants to do, right? And from that point, slowly move forward towards victory. And this is really a type of deck that you can play against and you can really feel absolutely trapped. So I'm really curious to see how Averett is going to battle this. And, and there's one last thing that I want to mention and I want to say it's not easy to get to the finals with the deck. I know that some people feel like, oh, it's just a matter of getting these cards together, get these pieces together, and I'll make it into the finals. No, because when you play the deck, you usually play long games, you play very demanding games, and on a tournament day, you have to play, you have to play your A game the whole day long. And if you do that, so if you're experienced with the deck, if you've tailored it in a way that it also fits your personality, then yes, you can make it to a top eight. And yes, you can make it to a final. And nobody's surprised seeing the deck in a final. But I'm just saying it's not as simple as, you know, get the cards together from the deck list and then you're going to be in a finals or you're going to win a tournament. It's not like that. So definitely I want to give my um, my, my thumbs up here to Nick for uh, for reaching the finals. And it's actually been a while since I've seen the deck in, in the tournament final last. So I'm kind of excited to, to see this battle because I also know that Avert is, you know, a very skilled player and he's got his deck's looking really strong. This deck is looking really strong. Before we go to the games, maybe it's nice if you let me know in the comments below who do you think is going to win this? Who is your favorite? And maybe explain why. Why do you think Avert is favorite? Why do you think Nick is favorite? I would love to hear from you and, and get some insights. So this is the deck of Nick. We've already looked at the deck of Avert and that means... It is showtime. Let's go to the finals of the Urborg Forest Frenzy. Game number one. Here we go. There is the fist bump. The finals of the Urborg Forest Frenzy Plateau into a Savannah Alliance. That's a pretty good start here for Aver. Let's see if he can put some pressure on. Okay. No, he can't. There's the swords. Of course, with the deck, the answers are always nearby. And I'm, I'm sure Avert's not surprised, just trying to put some more pressure on. There's a Chaos Orb. Interesting. Are we going to see a Disenchant here? There is an opening, of course, for Nick. If he has a land drop, there is a Mox. And okay, Time Walk taking an extra turn. Untapping, drawing for turn. Let's see what he can do. Of course, he can also decide to just wait with the Disenchant and, and, and play it as a response to something. Instead, he's playing an Ivory Tower. Interesting. Four cards in hand, I believe, so no life gain yet. There is a City of Brass. We also see a Disenchant in the hand of Avert. I wonder, I don't think he wants to use it right now on the, on the tower. So he's going to activate 
the Chaos Orb. Gonna flip on the land there, Mishra's Factory. That is a hit. Mishra's Factory is a goner, and there's a pass. And I think it's a good decision, actually, of uh, Aver to kind of use it, because Nick didn't have enough mana open. There we see a Divine Offering. Interesting, he's not attacking the mana base. After that flip on a factory, I thought maybe he wants to attack the mana base. But what I wanted to say is it makes sense that he flipped because there was an opening to flip. Because Nick didn't have two mana open, so he couldn't respond with a Divine Offering or a Disenchant. And there we see, ooh, interesting, an Icy Manipulator. He can start tapping down the City of Brass. And then and he deals damage, and Nick's kind of stuck. Looks like Nick is stuck on land here. Going through his hand... What can he do? Tapping two, taking a damage, regrowth. Ooh, that went really quick. Not sure what he got back there. Went a little bit too quick for me. Tapping four, there is a Suchi. Passing turn, tapping down the Sea of Brass. Both players taking a damage. And he's using the white mana from the City of Brass to cast a Swords to Plowshares on the Suchi. So that means four more life for Avert here, going to 23. And there is a pass of Nick here, only having that one blue Mox. And things are looking up for Avert here, but he doesn't have a drop for a creature. At least he can tap down the City of Brass, dealing a damage that way. And end of turn, disenchant on the Mox. That makes absolute sense. Nick is in serious trouble now. There's a little lion. And no swords from Nick anymore. Already used two, of course. Now he has to discard. And I think getting rid of that um, Ivory Tower was a really good move by Avert. Or else Nick would have gotten a lot of life. And he's now on 12. Have to pass. Oh, wow. This is really bad for Nick here. Not finding any more lands. Going to take even more damage here. There's a Mistress Factory as well. So next turn he can swing for four. Okay, there's a Factory from Nick. At least it's something, but he cannot animate it. So there's probably going to be an attack for four. You're going to animate the factory, I assume. That's exactly what he does. Attacking for four. He's going to go up to five. He's going to pass. Tap the city. There's a divine offering. So at least that's something. But is it too late? He does gain four life, of course, from his divine offering. So that kind of gives him another turn. So there's still time here for Nick to turn the tables. He's got that tundra open as well. If he has another sorts... He does not. Gonna go to four. And disintegrate. And that's it. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, I, for a moment there, I thought maybe the deck player, maybe Nick is gonna get back in the game, you know, in this one after that Divine Offering on the Icy Manipulator. And there you can also see the power of Divine Offering. It doesn't just destroy an artifact. It also gives you la a life for the casting cost. So in this case, and it destroyed uh, one of the best pieces on board for Avert, and it gave Nick an extra turn. Anyway, it wasn't helping him uh, much. He's lost his first game, so it's one up for Avert. We're going to give the, these players some time to sideboard, and we'll catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two of the finals. So let's see how these players sideboard it. We see Nick with Volcanic Island and a Mox Pearl, and there we see a Volcanic Island as well on the side of Avert, a pass turn, a second Volcanic. There's an Ancestral Recall here by Nick. And there we see a City of Brass by Avert. So he's got Counter Magic up now. Looks like he's a little bit into tank, trying to think what is he going to play past turn here to Nick. And Nick there is a Library of Alexandria. So he's just going to pass. How many cards in hand there? I believe there are seven. And there is some end step action here, it seems. He's going to go to 19. There is a Divine Offering on the Mox Pearl. Gonna draw for turn. Let's see what he can do. I mean, when you're staring down a Loa, which is pretty much active, that's not great. So he's gonna cast Savannah Line. And there we see that end step card draw by the library. So he's got nine cards in hand right now. Now he's got eight in hand. I'm expecting a removal spell here on the Savannah Lines. There's a Felwer Stone. Interesting, deciding to tap his Library of Alexandria. That is an interesting choice. There we see a counter spell on the Felwer Stone, and one of the reasons that he's doing it, exactly, he's hoping that Nick is going to play more cards out of his hand, trying to kind of deactivate that uh, Library of Alexandria there. 
there we see a city of brass. He can deploy that second line. First he's going to attack, so he's going to go to 18. I believe there's a second savannah line in his hand. He also has a brain geyser there. So he's going to go down to 18 because of the city and pass turn here. And does Nick have seven cards in hand again? There are some beers being passed. And he's drawn, going to go to eight. There's a city of brass and just a pass turn. At this point, things are looking really good for the deck player because the deck player is doing what he wants to do. You know, he's having control and he's not taking that much damage. There's a sword, kind of expected that. And he's probably going to take two. He's going to go to 16. Ooh, Nadi's going to animate. And there we see a bolt. He's got four of those. So he's going to lose his Mishra's Factory, taking two from the line. He's going to go down to 16. Seven, going to go to eight. So again, drawing extra cards here. And when he draws extra cards, he's probably going to find the answer. And Avert's like, oh, I wish I had a strip mine. <laughs> that would be sweet. Instead, it's on the other side for the table. Sorry, off the table, I should say. And there is a regrowth. And that Felwer Stone is really doing work because of that City of Brass on the side of Avert. It can make any color mana. There we see a Swords to Plowshares on the Savannah line. And I mean, again, this is what Nick wants to do. Complete control. He still has that Ancestral Recall in hand he can cast. And there we see a tap out by Avert. It's going to cast. Oh, there's an Ancestral Recall in response. I thought it was going to be a Red Elemental Blast, but it's not. So at least the Brain Geyser resolves. going to give him three cards. And he's finding his Ancestral Recall. This is pretty sweet. So he's gone five cards up this turn. Well, actually four, because Brain Geyser is also a card, of course. But he's finding lots of cards, and hopefully that will get him back into the match. But that Loa is still there, and that's a big problem. And Nick's still on a comfortable 15, going to draw another card here, 8 in hand. Is he going to discard, or is he finding something to play? Remember, he doesn't play with any creatures. Maybe he boarded in his one Sarah Angel, but I doubt it. Oh, yes he did. Okay, I shouldn't doubt him. <laughs> <laughs> Great stuff, Nick. Did you hear me commenting? Did you know I was going to say that? Anyway, uh, the 4-4 flyer is on the board now. There is a Mishra's Factory. A lot of cards on the side of Avert as well. I do see a Psionic Blast. Is he going to try to play that? I mean, Nick still has two blue open with the City of Brass and Volcanic Island, so he can counter it. Tapping the Tundra, untapping it again. So it kind of looked like he wanted to play a Swords to Plows here there. He is going to do that. That means 4 life for Nick. So he's going to go up to 19. No counter spell from his side. And he's going to pass turn. Let's see how many cards in hands he's going to draw again. Oh, so much value from that one Library of Alexandria. And there we see a tap for 4. There is a Jam Day Tome. And we see that Disenchant on the side of Avert. He's probably going to wait for the right time. Or is he going to play it now, taking a risk of running into a, a Counterspell? There we see a Copy Artifact. I'm really curious to see if Nick is going to do something against this. Does he have a Red Elemental Blast or a Counterspell? It looks like he doesn't. He's going to allow it to resolve. Are we going to see a factory activation? I don't think so. I mean, at this point in the game, you probably just want to keep your mana, especially... Okay, so he is... Act no, he's not activating. Playing Disenchant instead. Probably thinks, okay, Nick doesn't have a counter, or else he would have countered the copy artifact. And this would be ideal, of course, because now he was able to copy the Jam Day Tome, and then this... Ooh, this is unfortunate. Does he have a counter spell? Only a red elemental blast, I believe. This is unfortunate. So he's going to at least draw one card from it still. That's something. So the copy artifact is kind of replacing itself. And he's going to, okay, he's going to drop to 17, it seems. Taking three damage, of course. Tapping three City of Brass. And this is pretty intense. It's really going back and forth with the answers. I think eventually Nick will win because of the active Loa. He's simply drawing more cards than his opponent Avert here in this game number two. And there he goes, untapping, still trying to find 
his strip mine or his chaos orb or just anything to get rid of that loa a mind twist of course would help as well attacking for two here are we going to see some removal there is a bolt and interesting to see that uh, nick prefers to keep his strip mine alive and bolt instead of using his strip and keeping the bolt maybe to go on the life total and that makes perfect sense because for nick number one is control of the game and number two is actually winning you first need control and then you can win the game so life totals are not as important for the deck player there we see a black lotus and a pass turn i believe still seven in hand for nick we also see that one mistress factory that maybe nick can start using next turn to deal some damage and there is a mox emerald attacking for two years so and there's a disenchant on the mistress factory gonna draw an extra card possibly draw into a counter spell nope letting it resolve and let's see what is he gonna do here probably nothing i believe he's probably just gonna okay he's gonna play a land and he's gonna pass it's really a game of chess this game number two there is a suchi and every time you got to wonder, is there a counterspell? Is there a counterspell? And there's a Swords instead. And remember, Avert still has that Red Elemental Blast. So when there's a moment in the game where perhaps Nick is going to cast an important counterspell, he can respond with his Red Elemental Blast. There is a pass. And again, Nick doesn't mind passing. He doesn't, he doesn't mind this scenario. This is what the deck wants to do. He's a hat on cards. It's absolutely fine. And Avert knows this, of course. So he's trying to, you know, to change the scenarios. There is, there is a demonic tour. This could be important. He can protect it here. Protect it. Yes. Oh, ho, ho, man. Oh, that's good from Nick here. I thought if he's able to protect the demonic, possibly find, I don't know, a mind twist, for example, or probably better a strip mine, because you cannot counter a strip mine. He could take uh, care of the Library of Alexandria. Unfortunately for Avert, one red elemental blast to protect his spell wasn't enough. The demonic tutor eventually got countered. And here we see a Felwer Stone and just a pass, of course. And there is the strip, finally, finally. And there we see the, the fist from Avert. Yeah, I got it, finally. But he kind of knows it's, it's probably too late. Then again, it's better than not drawing it. He's still in it. He, I mean, he's on 21 life. But look at that full grip of cards. And I think if you're Nick now, you're really just, ooh, discarding the balance. Yeah, not re doesn't really need it. If you're Nick, you're just hoping to get another GM Day Tome to even go through your deck faster, trying to find your threats. There's a Demonic Tutor. Are we going to see a counterspell from Avert? We're actually not. He's passing turn here. And look at the library of Nick. It's pretty thinned out. And I wonder what he's going to look up now. He does need to put some pressure on. I mean, it would be nice for him if he would be able to at least attack a little bit. Okay, there's a Sarah Angel. And he's got counter magic to protect the Sarah. I think the main goal now of Nick is to keep this Sarah alive and start dealing some damage. And okay, there is a Swords of Plowshares. There is the counter spell. Are we going to see another? He also has a Psy Blast. There is the Psy Blast. And... Are we going to see something here? Or are we going to see another one? No, we're not. Okay, Sarah Angel's gone. This is going to be tough for Nick. I believe he only has two Sarahs that he put in his deck from the, from the sideboard. And there we see a Divine Offering on the Black Lotus. Interesting choice. On the other hand, a Black Lotus is three more mana, so he's probably trying to protect himself from a possible X spell. And there we see Disenchant, and there we see Disenchant, and yeah, it's going to resolve. So that Mind Twist perfectly timed after, of course, attacking the Sarah Angel, where Nick used his one counter spell, and things are actually kind of looking up for Avert here. Who would have thought, after so many cards drawn by Nick, Then again, I mean, Nick is still in a comfortable 19. They're both on 19. There is a Mishra's Factory. And a pass. 
There's an attack. We do see a library of Alexandria, by the way, and this is great for Avert because, you know, uh, Nick just used his strip mine. So if he can just get enough cards in hand and then cast the Loa, you can see him count his cards and he's thinking, do I want to cast a Sarah? No, I'm going to be patient. Going to go through his deck. Going to go through the deck here of Nick. And he's probably going to look at how much removal have you already played? How safe is my Sarah Angel? And he's going to play the Lotus. Okay. He's going to crack the Lotus. Going to cast the Sarah Angel. Mana Drain. Does he have an answer? I don't believe he does. Or am I missing something in his hand? No, he does not. And that is very unfortunate. There is a time walk, though, that's probably going to resolve. I think if I was Nick, I would actually let it resolve. It doesn't really matter that much. Ooh, there's another Sarah from the top. Wow, that's pressure. This is such a nail-biter. There's a time walk by Nick. At least finding something to deal damage with, with, but that Sarah Angel is a problem. Attacking your 4 damage. Nick dropping to 15. Passing turn. There we see... him going through his deck. Looking at the options. There's a Chaos Orb. Is he gonna flip it? Looks like he does. He's gonna flip it on the Sarah. Let's put this flip in slow motion. There we go, the flip. This is so, so important. The finals, bam, it's a hit. Okay, wow. And that was a good flip. And uh, yeah, there must have been a lot of pressure on this because if Nick would have missed the flip, you know, four damage a turn, that is pressure. And now we can also attack himself. And there is a Psy Blast protected with the Red Elemental Blast. So that means two damage for... Um, for Avert here from his own Psy Blast. I mean, sorry, from the from the Mistress Factory, of course, because the Psy Blast didn't resolve. So another damage here by the Factory Factory by Avert and Amox Pearl. Wow, this is such a this is such a close game. It can go either way. Attack for two here, gonna go to 13. So Avert deciding not to block, of course, his factory still having summoning sickness. And there's also a second factory. It's kind of out of the screen, but there's a second factory played by Nick. So, I mean, Nick kind of has the upper hand here. I'm not quite sure how many cards both players have in hand. It seems like Nick only has two. Oh, three, actually. There's a disenchant on the factory. Aver trying to attack with his factory. And pass turn. Now, Avert, of course, does play with a uh, double bolt. We haven't seen a lot of bolts from his side this game. He's now on nine, playing a Library of Alexandria. I'm not quite sure how many cards he's got in hand. I don't think there's enough for him actually to do something with the Library. I wonder if he taps it, we know how many cards he has, but I would be really surprised. Wow, look at those graveyards. They're so full. Three cards in hand. There's a Disintegrate, Mind Twist. Attack for four. There is a Suchi. Avert's on five now. It's going really fast with those two uh, Mishra's factories. Ooh, ashes to ashes. And that said, I think this is the decider, isn't it? He's on one. One last turn needs, I don't know what he needs, but he's not finding it. Wow. What a game number two. It's insane. I, I felt like at a certain point, it went really, really fast when, when Nick was able to get his second Mishra's factory on. And, um, you know, he was able to kind of control the board and just deal four, deal four, deal four. Then it went really, really fast. But that moment when Avert was actually able to swing in with the Sarah Angel and, you know, and Nick really had to to hit the Sarah with the, with the Chaos Orb. Man, that was a nail biter. So it means it's one, one now. Wow, who's going to win this finals? I guess at least Avert's on the play. Does that make him a favorite or not? I, I I don't really think so, to be honest. Anyway, um, both players are going to reassess their sideboard strategy and we'll catch back up with them in game uh, number three. Game number three, the decider. What a nail biter and what a final this has been so far. So the winner of this, um, of this game is going to be the winner of the Urborg Forest Frenzy and what a day it has been. We started at 11 in the morning. I think it's now, what, 11 at night, maybe later even. And we've got our finals. There's a cheers 
one of these two players is gonna win this tournament after these, I don't know, next, what is it gonna be, 10, 15, 20 minutes, who knows. Both players looking at their hands. Oh, look at that, Aver taking a mulligan. That is not great, he's on the play as well. So that means he's gotta start with six and he cannot draw. Let's hope for Aver that at least the hand that he's gonna pick now is worthy of keeping. Of course, taking his time to shuffle, looks like Nick is gonna keep his first seven. And this is great news for Nick, right? Because, you know, with the deck, you, you focus really on card advantage. It's a big theme. And now Avery is kind of giving you that advantage for free. He's got to put one card at the bottom. I guess it's going to be a land looking quite land heavy. That starting hand. There's a City of Brass pass turn. So only five cards in hand now for Avery. City of Brass by Nick. Also a pass. But he's got seven in hand. There is a Savannah line. So some pressure on the board. But in quick... Respawns there with the lightning bolt, taking care of the lion. So Avert, I mean Nick, is going to drop to 19, playing a Tundra pass turn. There we see Mistress Factory. I also see a Sarah Angel in hand and another Factory. So that's actually quite interesting. He does have some firepower in his hand. There's the Mistress Factory and the Jet. Are we going to see that Sarah Angel now? Is he going to play it out? Oh, interesting. He's going to animate the Factory instead. I actually expected him to perhaps play out the Sarah Angel. But he's not doing it. Instead, he's going to gain 3 life after the pump with the other factory. So he's on 23. Oh, mind twist. This is nasty. Is this game going to be over before it has started? Does it mean we already have a winner? It's looking really bad for Avert here. Only two cards in hand. Playing a line, attacking for two with the factory. At least putting some pressure on there. We see a Fower Stone and a pass turn. I mean, if you're Avert, what you want to do right now is just try to deal as much damage. Ooh, I wonder if he's going to play out the Sarah Angel. Is he going to take the risk? Of course, with those two City of Brasses and the Fower Stone, it's easy for Nick to make two blue and counter a possible Sarah Angel. And we can see Avert is really in the tank right now, and he's going to cast the Sarah. Hand is empty, and he's going to attack no counter spell from Nick. Does he have removal for the Sarah Angel? don't think he has. I mean, he's got more cards, but if the cards are just not going to help him, oh, they are going to help him. There we see a Sarah Angel on the side of Nick. I wonder what Avert's going to do here. Is he just going to attack with a Sarah or is he going to go full force? There we see a Mind Twist. Ho oh, ho! Wow, that Mind Twist is brilliant. Attacking here with the Lions and the Sarah, dealing four damage. Nick's going to drop to seven. It's looking really bad for Nick all of a sudden. This game is completely turned. What is he going to do? There is a Chaos Orb. He's probably going to flip. No counter spell on the Chaos Orb. I'm expecting an attack with the Sarah here. Is he going to animate the factory as well? If he does, then Nick needs to choose. And if he chooses to block... He's going to end it. Probably going to block the factory. So factory's going to die. He's going to go to three. Interesting choice here by Avert. What is he going to do? I mean, Nick's on three. He's so close attacking here, exchanging the two Sarah Angels. Does he have another Sarah in hand? He doesn't have enough mana, but still. And there's a blue card there. It's hard for me to see which what it is. If it's a Psyblast... He can blast his way to victory. Passing turn. Passing turn. Tapping. There's an ancestral recall. Ho ho ho! If he's got if, if he can draw into a land, the next turn he can Oh, there's a disintegrate! He didn't have a land drop yet. He can drop his land. No red source though. He cannot play disintegrate. Is oh, there's a time walk. No counter spell by Nick. Nick has nothing. I think he's gonna win this. If Avery can now cast Disintegrate and there's no counter spell from Nick, he's got the game. Perhaps he's thinking about a possible animation from Nick on the factory. What is he going to do here? Cast a Mox Sapphire and his Loa. Disintegrate in hand and his Sarah Angel, I believe. What is he going to do here? There's a Disintegrate for three. Oh, and he's won it. Ho, <laughs> ho. 
There we see the hand, just a land and a black lotus by Nick. Congratulations, Avert, for winning the Urborg Forest Frenzy 2021. Wow. For a moment there, I thought, to be honest, that perhaps Nick would animate his factory, play his swords on his own factory, and kind of stay alive in that way. Because, you know, I know Nick, he always finds some kind of way to stay alive. But it didn't happen. Congratulations, Avert, man. You've won this tournament now, not once but twice that is absolutely amazing and also a big shout out to the organizers uh, reindeer and micha thank you once again for organizing this and of course to the brow house and bartender lefty you absolutely rock and that was it the last match video from the urborg force frenzy 2021 and man it's been a blast reindeer micha you guys rock oh, oh everybody there man it was a great event if, if you're close by to Dusseldorf and you can make it to this tournament, I would really, really recommend it. I believe next year there is another tournament planned. So this is absolutely something that is gonna, gonna keep going and going and going. So I'm already looking forward to next year. Uh, and I would also like to thank you, the viewer, for watching another video right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you wanna support the channel, if you like what I do, then there are actually a few things that you can do completely for free that really help me and help the channel move forward. So the first thing that you can do is hit that like button. If you haven't done so already, please do it right now. It really helps the channel. And another thing you can do is leave a comment, man. Just leave a thumbs up in the comments section. Um, tell me what you think about the deck. Who was your favorite in this finals? I wanna know if you have any questions about sideboarding, I can ask the, the, the players actually to respond to that. So leave your questions in the comment section below. Don't be afraid because you know, you're helping the channel and it's always an interesting read for me as well and for other old school magic players that, that watch this video and check out the comment section as well. And there's of course a third thing that you can do and that is you can become a subscriber. So if you're new to the channel, Welcome, it's great to have you here. Please consider subscribing and you'll stay up to date. Talking about staying up to date, you can also click on the bell, you know, that little bell icon, and that way you will always be updated whenever I post new content. Usually I post content on Tuesday and on Friday and on Sunday I post a mail day video. And sometimes I do live streams as well, like this one in Dusseldorf, I also live stream, so then you'll get a live stream notification. So if you wanna, you know, stay ahead on the game on all the old school events and all the uh, match videos that I make, click that bell, it really helps. Um, and the last thing that you can do is you can become a sponsor of the show so you can actually help me and help the channel to stay afloat. And you can do that by joining the Patreon program. There's probably a link popping up right now. Click on that info card and that will take you straight to the Timmy Talks Patreon page where you can already support me for $1 a month. Man, that's like, that's nothing, right? And the cool thing is if you do that, you can actually join the Timmy Talks Discord. You can join the tournaments that I organize to thank all the patrons and channel members. And last but not least, your name will be in the end scroll of the video. How cool is that? Talking about the end scroll. Let's go there and let's take a look at the fantastic, the wunderbar, the amazing channel members and patrons of Timmy Talks. Ich kann das Fink, das Sumba, kann